Hi, in this video we will introduce concrete engineering and the use of concrete as a construction material. As we all know, concrete is simply a mixture of cement, water and stone. And stone can be coarse aggregate or fine aggregate which is commonly known as sand. And when you combine all these things together, we get a very strong and versatile construction material called as concrete. Concrete in itself may not be suitable for construction as, as a construction material, but when it is combined with steel, it forms a very strong and versatile construction material. And together, concrete and steel, we call it as a reinforced concrete. Concrete is very strong in compression, but the limitation of concrete is that it is very weak in tension. That is why we need steel in concrete to take the tensile stresses. The very interesting fact about concrete is that it is the second most used material by humankind, second just to water. And when it comes to construction material, it is the most used construction material. Just to put this in perspective, over 25 billion tons of concrete is used worldwide every year. That means 3 tons of concrete per every person in the world. In Australia alone, 24 million cubic meters of concrete is poured annually, which is in fact enough to fill around 10,000 Olympic sized pools. Now this sheer volume of concrete that we use every year is what makes the concrete the very important construction material. And as civil engineering students, we need to know about concrete and need to know understand the concrete better. Concrete structures, if designed properly, can withstand flood, weathering, and even uh, seismic loadings as well. This is a very iconic picture taken after Hurricane Katrina in 2005. As you can see, most of the uh, structure buildings built with different construction material like timber and other materials have been completely swept away by the flood. But, but the only structure remaining is the concrete structure. So as I said before, if designed properly, concrete structure can withstand weathering and flood and cyclones and even seismic loadings as well. Um, looking at the way concrete can be used, it can be divided into two types. One is reinforced concrete, as we talked about earlier. Reinforced concrete is basically the combination of concrete and steel. And the second one is pre-stressed concrete, where the steel is stressed. Um, there are specific advantages of stressing the steel in concrete structures. We'll talk about that one when it comes to the pre-stressed concrete. And when it comes to the construction technique itself, there can be there there are two types of concrete structure. One is cast in situ concrete structure, another one is a precast concrete structure. Cast in situ concrete, as the name suggests itself, the concrete is poured at the site itself. As seen in the first picture, concrete here is poured at the site using a pump, and this is for the construction of tram station in Gold Coast in Australia. And the second one is the construction of footpath in at James Cook University. Again, the concrete is being poured at the site itself. And this figure also shows um, the cast in situ concrete uh, for a building in Townsville, and the concrete is being pumped to the top floor for the construction of cast in situ slab. And another construction technique is precast concrete structures, where the concrete is cast in off-site, mostly in the factories, and then the precast concrete structures elements are being transported to the to the site for assembly. So as you can see in the first picture, the slabs columns are precast elements, and they are being transported to the site and then being assembled there. Uh, very distinct advantage of precast concrete element structure is that as the construct as the construction of the these elements are done in the factory there is a better quality control and also we can recycle the formwork so it saves on the formwork as well and also the construction is much faster because we just have to assemble the elements at the construction site 
But one limitation of um, precast concrete structure is that it has to be transported to the site. So uh, transporting elements and limitation is pretty much that limits the size of the thing elements that we can transport. And also it requires um, more advanced technique to assemble the uh, elements at the site as well. Now talking about the concrete structure, of course the most famous concrete structure uh, is Burj Khalifa building in Dubai and it is the tallest structure in the world at present and it is made of concrete and reinforcement. Um, the, the building itself is 880 meters tall and um, total amount of concrete used for construction of this building is around 330,000 cubic meters of concrete and Use amount of steel was also used, of course. 39,000 ton of steel was used in construction of this building. And another interesting fact of during the construction of this building is that the concrete was pumped 601 meter vertically up for the construction of high, higher floors. So this set the world record of maximum height concrete was pumped. And another iconic concrete structure is, of course, Sydney Opera House. We, of course, admire the beauty of Sydney Opera House, but we often do not appreciate that it is a concrete structure, in fact. So as you can see, the underneath of Opera House here, uh, these are the precast ribs, and on top of the precast ribs, there are precast shell elements put on the, um, on the ribs. And this is one of the rare pictures of Sydney Opera House during the construction stage itself. And you can see the precasting was done at the site itself. And then uh, the precast ribs were put in and the precast um, the slabs were put on the ribs. Put precast shell elements were put on the rib. And in Australia, another iconic um, concrete structure is the Eureka Tower in Melbourne. It is the tallest building in the Southern Hemisphere and it was the tallest apartment building when it was constructed in 2006. And um, slip form construction technique was used for the construction of this building and of course uh, slip form construction technique is used for the construction of most of the high-rise building, concrete buildings. So what is being done in the, this construction technique is that this platform is used to uh, use for um, the for construction workers to stand and put the reinforcement and make all the uh, preparation and this uh, form work also act as a form work as well platform works as a form work as well and this platform is gradually moving upward and when it moves upward the concrete that comes out of it has already hardened so it is gradually moving so that it will give enough time for the concrete to set so it is a very efficient construction technique for high-rise buildings. Uh, another local example of concrete uh, structure is the Reef Rescue Aquarium in uh, Townsville. Um, Reef Rescue Aquarium, uh, it is the largest coral li live coral reef aquarium in the world. And um, so the size of the, the main tank is 38 by 17 meter and 5 meter deep. And as you know, the con uh, for the concrete tank, um, one of the biggest requirements is that there shouldn't be cracks. And Townsville is a very hot um, tropical city. So um, to reduce the chances of cracking in concrete, uh, we need to reduce to control the temperature of the concrete itself. So liquid nitrogen was used to control or reduce the temperature of the concrete. Liquid nitrogen is being um, push into the concrete tank as you can see here which helps to reduce the temperature of the concrete this is done to prevent the cracking in the concrete and concrete is of course used for construction of breezes piers decks as well and as you can see it is example of a reinforced concrete piers in the breeze and when we talk about the breeze a very iconic breeze reinforced concrete breeze is a Milau viaduct in southern France uh, it is the tallest vehicular breeze in the world at present and in fact one of uh, one of the piers uh, of this breeze is in fact taller than the Eiffel Tower as well. And Three Gores Dam is another example of the magnificent concrete structure. 
and pre-stress concrete TV tower in Germany and this is the first pre-stress concrete TV tower so concrete can be used for constructing these different kind of structures as well and it can be used for pavements as well for rigid pavements concrete is used for constructing rigid pavements so as you can see here concrete can be used to construct different kinds of structures and um, and let's have a little bit look into the how the stru concrete structure can fail as well so these are some examples of failure in con concrete structures and this is again another iconic picture of uh, from Kobe earthquake in Japan it is the failure of Hansin Expressway in Kobe earthquake this is another view of the collapse of the Hansin Expressway as you can see a large portion of this expressway collapsed during the, this earthquake there are different reasons that are attributed to the collapse of this breeze but one of the reasons given is that uh, there was a soil structure interaction during the earthquake that that means the soil the piles and the structure interacted and means there was interaction between that in during the earthquake and that was not accounted for during the design of this breeze and this Kobe earthquake marks the transition of the Japanese design code that a lot of lessons were learned from this um, earthquake and the earth concrete design code signif had a significant change after the 1995 Kobe earthquake in Japan and when we are talking about the earthquakes another big earthquake occurred in New Zealand in 2011 on February 22nd it was a 6.3 magnitude earthquake and the casualties were 111 and one of the buildings that collapsed is the CTV building which is a concrete structure and it completely collapsed and there were some design faults reported in the building and one of the most recent earthquakes is 2015 Nepal earthquake and which also where also we saw quite many concrete collapse of quite many concrete structure uh, this figure here we it uh, a quick glance it looks like the building is fine but if we look closely we can see that the ground floor has completely disappeared this typical kind of failure is what we call as soft story failure uh, this happens mainly because um, in many countries and for the ground floor we often remove the pillars or the columns or the walls just to open up for retail shops or garages so that makes makes the ground floor uh, weaker than the other floors which are more stiffer so that means uh, when the earthquakes hit the ground floor, floor collapses and it is a so it leads to the soft story failure and second figure here is the pancake failure of the whole structure concrete structure here and this is a um, failure of the concrete column when we are designing a concrete building we do not want concrete columns to fail but here as you can see here the concrete column has failed which has led to the collapse, um, collapse or damage of the whole building critical damage to the whole building we'll talk about this kind of failure what leads to this kind of failure when we are talking about the concrete columns so that is just a very general overview of concrete and use of concrete as a construction material now in the next videos we'll talk about more about um, concrete in detail concrete as a material in detail then we we'll look into how this can be used as a um, for the construction of structures